Greetings. This is an earthquake watch for January 20, 21 and 22. A major 7.2 earthquake was recorded yesterday in southwestern Pakistan, shaking a lot of areas of the country and can be felt as far as India and also United Arab Emirates. And this is a fairly powerful earthquake. Now there wasn't many aftershocks associated with this, but there may be some more earthquakes in the same latitude during this watch period. Okay, and the main reason for this is the solar corona shows a significant coronal hole that I've associated with this major earthquake and it sits currently in this position at 28 degrees and it appears that we may be receiving one or two events in a similar latitude and I will be plotting this during this um, watch. There's also a very powerful earthquake coming in the next day or two and this is the one I'll also be um, keeping a close eye on. We're having a look at the solar wind data and it's fairly unusual. It's been um, fairly high since January 6 and they haven't really come right down so this is fairly unusual and it does appear that we may be receiving uh, one or two large earthquakes. The X-ray flux monitor showed a significant spike back in January 16 and it's just slightly out of screen here and it's been fairly quiet since but we're just starting to see a pickup in activities and this gives me a good idea that um, we are approaching an active period. Okay, we have the Solon.info coronal hole information and I will leave this information in the description box for anyone interested in this website. Now, there are a few coronal holes that have yet to transpire into any earthquakes. I do feel that there may be a 5.5 earthquake in this hole and the main reason why I'm looking at this region is it'll give us a slight heads up on when the next earthquakes will be. Okay, here is a close-up view of the southern hemisphere with Solon Monitor and here is the coronal hole that we we're just focusing on just previously. And I do feel that there is a 5.5 potential on this event, perhaps Bellany Islands or Macquarie Islands. Now, the reason why I'm talking about it is that um, it won't be too long after that we will receive, that I feel, an event in New Zealand, perhaps slightly larger, perhaps around about 5.9 in magnitude. And it does set 50 degrees to 43 degrees south latitude. Okay, here is Google Earth showing New Zealand and the area that I'm looking at would be just on the edge of this fault line extending downward so this area of New Zealand may be at risk of an event um, perhaps January 20 uh, maybe late today January 19 but um, we'll get a heads up if there's an event lower now New Zealand's um, currently getting significant rainfall from the effects of the tropical cyclones so our thoughts go out to these people and we hope that they're all safe and there's also a potential that there may be high tides associated with these weather anomalies and this may activate these volcanoes so there may be some activities um, that may be worth keeping an eye on also. Okay and just having a look at the AIA 171 angstrom and this is the coronal hole that I perceive may be um, with New Zealand signature so that's the area and that's the reason why I've mentioned those two regions. Here is the northern hemisphere with solar monitor and we're looking at a significant coronal hole and quite powerful and it's sitting 13 to 17 degrees north latitude and I feel this represents a risk of a 7 plus earthquake during this watch period. My number one concern and the main area of risk for this watch would be the Philippine Plate region and the most likely area would be Guam and Mariana Islands as they sit right on the danger zone of 13 to 17 degrees north latitude. Now there is a concern and there's a fairly good symmetry also with the coronal hole and the shape of this trench which is moving up towards the dangerous Benin Island region. Now the area of Guam is conducive to some very large earthquakes so too Mariana Islands so I do feel that this is um, perhaps a very good matched area and the most likely area of concern for this watch. My second area of concern will be the Philippines. Now this area has been severely affected by flooding and also volcanic activity. Now the floods have affected the um, Philippines quite severely with 57 lives being lost. Now we do have a significant monsoon trough that's above the Philippine region and there is a fairly powerful storm just adjacent to Taiwan and it's about 950 millibars which is an extremely powerful system and I feel that this represents a potential of higher swells in this area. Now the reason why I usually um, avoid areas that are affected by storms but um, we did see a significant um, tropical storm above the um, New Caledonia region and this sort of triggered the 
large earthquake in Vanuatu. So I feel that there is a potential that we may receive a similar sort of effects in the Philippine region. Now there is another risk with Philippines, the Bulusan volcano has been reactivated again and it did show signs of life yesterday. So this is a fairly dangerous area, we've got some very powerful volcanoes in play and this will be the second area of watch. Okay, my final area of watch would be the base of the Mexican region. There are some, there are some fault lines here that may be at risk and a large amount of volcanoes as we can see on the edge of the um, fault line. So it does extend down to Guatemala and Nicaragua and El Salvador did receive a 5 point something not too long ago which could be perceived as a foreshock of a larger event. So this area would be my third area of concern. We're looking at the SDO composite imagery and I'm focusing on a few other coronal holes. Now this is the main coronal hole that I've just uh, mentioned with my main watch but there are some more coronal holes above which sits about 28 to 29 degrees north latitude and I do believe that the Bonin Islands may receive another earthquake um, perhaps about 6.3 in magnitude uh, but it does represent a risk. There's also a potential that the Gulf of California may be in play as well. Now we did receive a bit of a foreshock in this region perhaps and I'm a little bit concerned because we did receive a lot of earthquakes in the base of the um, Gulf of California and just starting to show some signs of life in the middle reaches which may be of, of a concern of the entire fault line being activated. So there is a slight risk that we may receive a smaller event in this region. But the most likely area would be Benin Islands. Now the only concern I've got is that the entire fault line may be affected now because the initial earthquake that I perceived would be the Mariana Islands Guam region which will be the base of this trench. So it's just a little bit concerning that um, perhaps the entire fault line may be activated. So that'll be my earthquake watch. Um, there is some significant potential with this earthquake watch and the results will be annotated at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.